one of the more common exploits that people experience, especially for novice developers, is the SQL injection attack. Uh, someone will try to exploit poorly sanitized user input and try and make your database do things that you don't want it to, uh, whether it's allowing someone to access your website using a uh, username and password that have been hacked or um, that were modified in some way so that way they can uh, they can get access or they could use it to delete information or corrupt information in your database. Uh, what I've prepared here is a simple example of a poorly secured application that someone who maybe doesn't know better or who is kind of learning on the ropes on their own might come up with because they don't think about uh, sanitizing user input. Uh, so here what I have is I have a username and password login form. Um, I have a test user the password of test1234. If I log in, then it gives me my user ID. And uh, this isn't set up with sessions, so if I go back, it's just going to uh, display the login form again. If I were to use someone else, let's say John random password, he will get your user credentials were not found. Please try again. Um, if I look at my code, there is this hack. There's hackers enter this bit here and it's the ending quote. If I look at my SQL uh, statement here, it's select ID from users where username is equal to post username and password is equal to post password. So these are put in exactly how the user enters them. Uh, so that that's where this single quote or one equals one comes in. Uh, so the single quote is ending the password here and then it opens up or one equals one, which is always going to return true. So hackers enter this, they can get in. And if I were to do that in my password, so if I copy that, go back over, um, let's see, uh, we'll use the username of Mary, which I know is not in there. And then if I pass, pass in the password and hit login, I'm going to get the first user in that database table. So if that's an admin, that can become very troublesome. Someone can go in and delete all the users. Uh, they just have access to the administrative area of your website. Um, so I'm going to go through and show you how to prevent this using uh, prepared statements with MySQL I. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all this code here since most of it's not going to uh, change too much. Um, and I am just going to replace some of this stuff. Uh, the first thing you need to do is change your MySQL connection to a new MySQL I object. And the fourth parameter that it uses is the database name. So I'm just going to pull this up here. So we have your host name, your username, your password, and your database name. Uh, so we have a MySQL I object here. We're still using the SQL, but we're going to change a few things on it. Instead of passing in a string here, what we're going to do is we're going to use placeholders. The question mark is a placeholder, uh, which will be replaced as you start going through the actual prepared process. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for the password. All right. Um, so what we need to do instead of running the query itself right off the bat, we need to get rid of this. Um, and I am going to get rid of this if statement as well for right now. It's, we're going to make use of it later, um, but just so that way it's not confusing, I'll uh, kind of move it out of the way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a prepared statement. So what we do is we create a, a variable statement, stmt, is equal to connection prepare, and then we pass in that SQL uh, query that we, we created before. Um, so what this does is it creates a prepared statement. This object, the stmt, now has access to additional methods uh, which we can use to bind variables to those placeholders, uh, which is what we're going to do now. Um, STMT, and then we're going to run the bind param method on it. The first thing that it takes is a string of characters that are giving it the type that we're going to be passing in. I'm going to do SS. Uh, each one is assigned to each placeholder. So S is a string, 
will be assigned to the first question mark. All right, sorry about that. I need to go get a drink really quick. Uh, so I believe what I was talking about was the uh, variable types here. Um, the first S gives the first question mark a type, uh, which is string. There is S for string, I for integer, D for double, and B for blob. Um, so we're just going to use strings here. And then these also work um, after this first argument, you pass in additional arguments. Um, and these are actually the values that you want those question marks to have. So the first one is post username. And then we're going to pass in post password. All right. So now Now our bind param uh, piece binds those values in into our uh, prepared statement. And the last thing we need to do is called execute on the statement itself. And this will go to the database, get the results set, load it into the statement object itself. And now all that information av is available to us to use. Um, the last piece that we need to do is we need to use that if statement that I had way down here and I'm going to use if stmt fetch and it's going to get the first uh, record within that result set that we got back. Um, so this is going to pass or this is going to spit out ID. Uh, oops, let's do this row. All right. Oh, I did forget one thing. Uh, what we need to do is we also need to bind the information coming out. We don't have to do this. You can uh, you can pull it out from the result for, from the the fetch the row that's being passed back from fetch, um, but it just makes it easier. So what statement bind result does is it gives us a variable. Um, and the same idea where our place in our parameters that we're assigning kind of goes along with the question marks, um, the uh, argument kind of goes along with the place in the select statement. Uh, so the ID would be the first place if we were to get username, then that would be the second place and we'd pass in. Uh, we could do user, whatever we want for the variable, um, but that can go here. I'm going to get rid of this. And I'll get rid of this since we don't need username. And down here, I'm going to replace row with ID. Uh, get rid of this row equals piece here. So now if I save that, go back up into a good site. So I'm going to change my address to good site. We have username and password. If I type in test, test one, two, three, four, we should get logged in no problem, which we do. And then if I go back to good site, if I try and use the same exploit that we had before up here, copy this and test, paste that in, it's going to filter out that information and it should escape those uh, single quotes. So we're going to get your user credentials are not found. Please try again. Um, so this is a great way of filtering user input or sanitizing user input without really having to do a whole lot. Um, the other benefit of prepared statements was I'm going to change this up a little bit here. Um, I am going to comment all of this out. So we'll comment all of this stuff out uh, right there. All right, and we'll just work with this. Um, so our SQL statement is going to be select username from users where ID is equal to, and we're going to pass in our question mark. All right, so we're going to do our statement equals, whoops, prepare uh, equals connection prepare SQL. Now, the, the key benefit of using prepared statements is we can reuse that statement over and over. We'll never have to recreate that statement unless we're going to change the, the SQL itself. Um, but if we're just replacing the placeholder value or, the, or we're binding new information, we can actually reuse that same statement 
and then do what we need to do. And then on the next one, it'll, it'll save us a lot of time. I've seen some people reduce their queries, uh, their query time. I mean, and these are on large, large data sets, like uh, 30,000 records. Um, but I've seen people reduce their query time by almost two seconds. So it went from like 3.2 seconds to 1.2 seconds, uh, which is a, a huge increase when you're working with that large set of information like that. Um, so if we get our prepare statement here, what we need to do now is we need to create um, an array. And just for the, the time being, I'm gonna use array equals array. And I'm gonna pass in the user IDs that I wanna grab, six and seven. Um, I don't need quotes since those are just integers. All right, um, and this is a poor example. I wish I, I could come up with something a little bit better, but I don't want to change the context too much. I want to keep the whole user uh, user piece. So I'm going to do that, and then ID or the integer iterator value is going to be zero. So while i is less than count. Oops, I want to change this. This is actually going to be user IDs, so that way it's a little more intuitive when you read through the code. Uh, user IDs, we're going to do whatever happens in here. At the end, I'm going to increase the iterator. All right. Um, so the next step is we're going to be binding our values. So statement bind param. We're going to use an i for an integer since we only want integer values to be passed through. And then we're going to use our user IDs and we're going to get whatever the current iterator number is to get that value out of the array. So we get that. And then we're going to execute our statement. And we're also going to bind uh, a result, uh, which is going to be our username variable. And again, that's grabbing the value from the first field that we're getting back. Uh, so username, this doesn't have to match, but I'm just so that way it's intuitive. Uh, username variable is going to grab whatever is in the field username. Um, so we're bind results, and if statement fetch then we are going to dump it out to the screen so echo user username and we're just going to put in a break there uh, so if everything works accordingly this should work um, I don't really see anything that might go wrong but let's give it a try. Um, let's see, good sites, username, we'll do test, test, login. Uh, so I, of course this, you don't really need the form, it's gonna go through anyway since it's not really doing anything. Um, but the users that we grabbed are test, Nick, and Fred. If you were to look at the, uh, I mean, you're not going to see a huge result, uh, difference here because there's nothing else really running on my computer and we're not working with a large data set. But if you start getting into thousands and thousands of records, this will make a big difference. This will reduce your query times and especially with more complex stuff, this will save you a bunch of time. Um, so I would say take a look at prepared statements. It's going to make your applications a lot more secure. Um, it's going to be less legwork for you. I mean, maybe a little bit in the beginning when you have to set up the, the binds and the execute and all that stuff. But overall, it's going to save you time and headache. Uh, so take a look at that. I'm going to work on PDO next, uh, which is my preferred version of uh, database access because it's a database uh, object wrapper and it kind of uh, abstracts the connection layer. So you just you pass in your connection string um, and then it can connect to SQL Server, Oracle, uh, ODBC, all of those things. Um, so and it makes things a lot easier, a little more uniform too when you're switching out, uh, switching out data access. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, just shoot me a comment or send me an email. Um, and hopefully you guys find this useful.